In this first part, we will perform an introduction to digital modulations using GNU Radio. The different concepts illustrated here are how to send bytes using digital modulation, the constellations QPSK and 16QAM, pulse shaping, synchronization, and decoding the emitted message. Before moving on to practice, a quick theoretical reminder of what the QPSK and 16QAM constellations are. We consider the complex plane with the real part on the abscissa and the imaginary part on the ordinate. The QPSK constellation uses two bits per symbol, which makes four possibilities whose coordinates are as follows minus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, and plus one, minus one. Each coordinate corresponds to two bits, zero, 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 one, 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 and one, zero. For the 16 QAM constellation, it is the same principle except that there are 16 possibilities, so four bits per symbol. It's a little more difficult because we are going to show coordinates like minus 0 0.33, minus 0 0.33 for the symbol, for example, 0101. Now let's see how to illustrate this with GNU Radio. So let's go step by step. First, we define a number of variables that we will explain when we need them. For the data source, we send bytes in decimal, values between 0 and 255, with a vector source in which we can indicate the values with a variable send defined in a cute gray chooser. As there is no hardware limiting the data stream, we add the throttle block. The packed to unpacked block indicates how many bits per symbol we consider, what is related to the constellation used. First, we use the QPSK defined in a group of variables here. Two bits per symbol, the coordinates in the complex plane, and the digital values associated in decimal 0, 1, 2, 3, and two bits, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. To understand, let's look at what this block returns with a UCAR to float type converter and a time sync. If we send only zero in decimal, the result will only be zeros. If we send 85 in decimal, so only couples of zero one, the result will be a sequence of one. If we send 170, so only couples of one zero, the result will be a sequence of two. If we send 255, the result will be a sequence of three. And if we choose to send random numbers, the result will be random values between zero and three included. If we decide to use another constellation, 16 QAM, for example, we have to change to four bits per symbol. The bits will be taken by chunks of four and the decimal values evolve between zero and 15. But let's stay for the moment with the QPSK constellation. So this value is sent to the chunk to symbol block that will convert these values to complex coordinates. Let's see what's happened with the time sync in complex mode. When we send only couples of zeros, the output is minus one and minus one, corresponding to the defined coordinate. It is the same for all the other symbols as we can easily check. Minus one, one, one minus one, and one, one. These values can be plotted in constellation sync, and we can check that the symbols are in the expected places. OK for 0, 0. OK for 0, 1. OK for 1, 0. OK for 1, 1. And OK for random numbers. Then rectangular symbols are formed by adding an interpolation of eight samples. 
we can look at the rectangular shape in the time sink. Now, let's look at what pulse shaping does. We choose a root size at cosine filter to increase the spectral efficiency of transmission. Let's observe the signal before and after filtering. Before filtering, the rectangular shape of the symbols produces a lot of high frequencies. The signal to noise ratio is not very favorable. After filtering, very high frequencies have been removed and the frequency spectrum is much better defined. In time domain, it can be seen that the fast transitions of the rectangular signal have been considerably softened by the filter. Now, the signal is ready to be sent on the carrier frequency of your choice. To simulate this, we use a frequency slating filter and we choose the carrier frequency of 50 kHz. We add a little noise to simulate channel propagation and we can observe the signal in another gray sync. First, we can check that the signal is shifted by 50 kHz. Then we can observe the effect of noise on the spectrum. If the noise is too important, the signal is hidden in the noise and it will be more difficult to recover it. Then the modulated signal is sent to the reception part with a virtual sync. When the signal is received, the first thing to do is to demodulate it, so to bring it back to baseband. To simulate this, we use again an X-slating filter indicating exactly the same frequency value. We can observe exactly the same signal, centered and zero. But if we try to look at the constellation, we don't retrieve exactly what is expected because of the pulse shaping. So we have to add a synchronization block to get only one value per symbol is the role of the symbol sync block. This block will perform synchronization using the Muller and Muller algorithm. We only need to indicate the number of samples per symbol. The other parameters are left by default. At the output of this block, we can observe the constellation and check that everything is as expected. Now the received QPSK constellation is correct. At this moment, we can check that everything is working with the 16 QAM constellation. Finally, it's necessary to decode this constellation. It's the role of the constellation soft decoder in which it's necessary to introduce the parameters of the constellation defined in a constellation object which takes the value of the variables defined previously. Then, we add the binary slicer that will slice the float values to binary. We form the bytes per 8-bit packet and we decide here to save everything in a binary file. Well, let's see if everything works and if you recover the right values in your file. OK. 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 Seems OK with QPSJ. And you need to believe me, but everything works perfectly with 16 to IM too. Before ending this presentation, let's come back to something that is common to have to deal with when real signals are received. Here, the transmit and receive frequencies could be set exactly to 50 kHz, which is not the case in reality. Uh, the local oscillators of two devices, transmitter and receiver, are not perfectly synchronized. We can model that by adding a parameter DF in the reception frequency. Now let's see what happens when the oscillators are not perfectly synchronized. If the offset is positive, the constellation starts rotating clockwise, and this more and more quickly than the offset is growing. If the offset is negative, it's the exact opposite. 
So in the real world, it is imperative to use something which makes it possible to compensate for this frequency shift. In GNU Radio, we have the cost as loop block. Now let's just look at its effect. Before costas, the constellation is rotating, and after costas, the symbols are fixed. The costas block in Juno Radio will work for all phase modulations, BPSK, QPSK, 8PSK, but not for QAM modulations, which vary both amplitude and phase. This can be verified using the 16 QAM constellation in our simulation. When the frequency shift is present, the constellation is still rotating, and Costas loop is not efficient here, so in this case we have to find another solution to compensate this frequency shift. This concludes this presentation about digital communications with GNU Radio. Thank you for your attention.